Hello and welcome to another lecture of the course of Government and Politics. Today we are going to talk about Liberalism, Libertarianism and Socialism. I am Muhammad Tahmidul Islam, Lecturer, Department of Law, World University of Bangladesh and I will be conducting this lecture. So, at first let's go to Liberalism. Liberalism is a political ideology that advocates for individual rights, freedoms and governmental responsibilities to ensure those rights in an equitable manner. So, uh, from this definition we can see that it is a political ideology that focuses on individual rights and freedoms first. But also it focuses on the government's responsibility to ensure those rights of those individual persons. It is a modern political ideology that can be traced back to the age of enlightenment in Europe when Europeans gradually came out of the religious dogmas of the Dark Ages. So it is relatively modern than those uh, other ideologies that we have talked about earlier like conservatism which has a root in the past. And uh, this ideology actually developed during uh, the Enlightenment period when uh, the Industrial Revolution just started to take place and uh, people started to become more aware of their surroundings, more aware of their rights and they wanted to have changes. They wanted to have changes in their lives and they wanted to have equality for all, not just uh, for a richer class of people. The ideals of liberalism have been used to justify the glorious revolution of 1688 in Britain, the American Revolution of 1776 and the French Revolution of 1789. All of these overthrew monarchs and installed more liberal types of governments. So if you look at the American Revolution where the American people revolted against the British Empire, British King, and they established their own country in 1776 based on republicanism and constitutionalism. So that was uh, an experiment in the liberal ideas of political philosophy. And also in the French Revolution of 1789, we see that uh, the King Louis XVI was overthrown by the uh, Jacobians or the revolutionaries who revolted against the king because of the king's mismanagement of, uh, of public funds and people were starving, people were suffering in France and they had enough of the kingship and they installed a revolutionary government in that place. So liberal ideas were used in order to make those revolutions successful and make those revolutions people friendly. Liberalism recognizes the necessity of governments to protect individual rights and freedoms. However, it also realizes that government itself can become tyrannical if, gets, uh, if it gets more powerful than it should. So, liberalism, uh, one of the most uh, important characteristics of liberalism is that it realizes that we need government to rule ourselves, we need government to properly uh, control a country, but also it, uh, it recognizes the fact that if we provide government with more power, then it will end up taking even more power and then it will be corrupt and then it will uh, infringe upon the rights of the general people which uh, which is not the activity of the government the government should uh, act in such a way that it should ensure the rights of the individual person not take away the right from them Liberalism aims to strike a balance in the governmental power of a state to ensure the safeguarding of individual rights and freedoms. So there must be a balance between the governmental power and the individual power or individual rights. So liberalism aims to go in the middle path. It says that yes, we need government, but we shouldn't provide government with more power than it needs. Modern liberalism believes that the government's 
have a positive duty to eradicate poverty, discrimination and ignorance among the population to ensure that every citizen has the full opportunity to prosper. So in the modern times, in the modern liberal countries, we see that there are a lot of social activities or social programs like uh, public education, public schools or um, social credit system or social um, uh, security numbers where people can get health care and uh, child support and and many kinds of benefits that helps them or enables them to participate in the greater society in a productive manner so modern liberals believe that government has the uh, duty to help the people who are uh, far behind some other people who are you know amassing a lot of riches a lot of wealth liberalism is more popular in western democratic welfare states like the uk germany norway canada etc so uh, western countries in general follow liberal uh, political ideologies and uh, we see that uh, eastern countries do not necessarily follow these uh, liberal principles because these principles also have the right of the individual person to choose for themselves and eastern countries in general sense have a problem with that in the dark ages in europe before enlightenment people's rights were determined by their social classes and wealth so people if uh, if a person was wealthy that person had more rights and more uh, opportunities to grow than a poor person liberalism was the first ideology that advocated for equal treatment towards all and discrimination towards none so liberalism or the liberal idea when it uh, when it become when it started to become popular it advocated for equal rights for all people no matter if the person is poor no matter if the person is rich or uh, you know famous it doesn't matter people should have equal rights people should have equal opportunity and the person who does not have equal opportunity it is the responsibility of the government to ensure that the person gets the equal opportunity to thrive in his or her personal life democracy is a prerequisite to a liberal form of government so if we want to have a liberal democracy or a liberal uh, form of political system we must install democracy in a country without democratic process liberalistic ideas cannot be effectively administered into a society so if the country is not democratic no matter how liberal the king is he cannot perceive the needs of the people by himself or herself so in that case we need to have a participatory democracy in order to properly administer liberal ideologies in a country so from this part we see that uh, li liberalism is a fairly modern idea that uh, focuses on individual rights and government responsibilities in ensuring those individual rights so now let's go to libertarianism and see what it is all about libertarianism is a form of liberalism that advocates for limited government and unlimited individual freedom of citizens so libertarianism is actually uh, a unique form of liberalism and libertarianism advocates for limited government the government should be the least amount of power should have the least amount of power and the person or individual citizen should have individual power and that should not be infringed upon by any other person or any other government libertarianism believes in all the core principles of human rights and free market ideas but it is highly skeptical of governmental overwatch and advocates for the least amount of power to be given to any kind of authority that has the power to limit the freedom of the individual so from this part we understand that libertarianism is actually more focused on the human rights aspect of uh, of the government and also the free market aspect so libertarianism believes that human rights are absolute government cannot infringe upon the human rights of a person in any case and also it believes in free market it believes that government should stay away from the market the market should regulate itself uh, you know from the ideas of adam smith and and also it is highly skeptical of governmental overwatch the governmental power is something that usually gets corrupted even if we look at america even if we look at uh, uk 
uh, Canada, Australia, countries like that, we see that if the government gets uh, more power that it, uh, than it deserves, it usually gets corrupted and it usually uses that power against the people. So libertarianism says that if the government usually abuses its power, we should not give the government the power. So that is the standpoint of libertarianism. Libertarians reject collectivism, the idea that advocates for higher priority to collective rights rather than individual freedom. So collective rights are certain things like, you know, uh, right to education, food, shelter, clothing. So it, these are general rights. And these are certain kinds of rights that are given to people no matter the status of that person, no matter if the person uh, is actually working to get those facilities or not so these are collective rights but individual freedom and individual rights are those rights and freedoms which an individual person have intrinsically like if you work for your money you should keep your money you should not give others your money if not voluntarily you can give others your money voluntarily as uh, as a form of charity but if the government takes money from you from your earning and gives it to the person who does not work for his earnings or who does not work as hard enough that uh, that is called to be a type of extortion by the government government is extorting money from the successful people to actually facilitate the uh, not so successful people so that is uh, an issue with the libertarians who reject collectivist ideas Unlike liberalism, libertarianism advocates for limited government spending in welfare projects. So welfare projects are those projects that are aimed towards the um, disadvantaged class of people in a society because in every society we will see that there, are, there will be a group of people that are not doing so well, that are not living uh, in the average standard of living in that area. So generally the poor people generally the people who are drug ad addicts and uh, and that sort of people so these welfare projects are rejected by libertarians they say that people should be given the chance and people should be able to fend for themselves they should be able to work for themselves to make their life successful it is not the responsibility of the government to make other people's lives successful or other people's lives bearable so in order to make other people's life uh, successful the government actually extorts money extorts uh, resources from the successful people and gives it to the poor but it doesn't uh, actually elevate the position of the poor the poor doesn't get richer because the poor actually gets um, accustomed to getting the relief, accustomed to getting the uh, money from the government. And they say, well, I have enough for me, so now I'm not going to work. So this happens. And libertarians actually reject that idea. They say welfare projects should be just minimum. Libertarians regard government taxes as a form of extortion or theft of individual property and property rights is also a key component in the libertarian idea as it believes that governments should not have the power to infringe upon individual properties at all and limit the accumulation of property by any other means so libertarians believe that uh, property rights are absolute and individual property is such a sacred thing to libertarians that it believes that the government should not have the power to uh, make those properties uh the people's property or uh in general sense what happens is that sometimes governments see that uh, certain industries are becoming uh, more and more privatized or held by private entities or private persons they then see it as a threat and then uh, and then make them public by just a stroke of a law they create a law and they said this and this industries are going to be public companies from now on and the government is owning 60%, 70% or sometimes 100% of that company. But the company was built by individual person, individual people. They worked hard for it and the government just came in and then made it public. So this kind of things are actually sort of like uh, robbery done by the government and these kind, uh, kind of robberies are done in 
generally socialist and communist countries. So libertarians are actually opposed to these kind of actions. In essence, libertarianism does not believe that the people of a state should be treated like children and believes that people are knowledgeable enough to make the best decisions for themselves without government interference and should be left alone to live their own lives in peace. So libertarian people believe that every individual person has absolute right to live their life the way they see fit. So it doesn't matter what race you are, it doesn't matter what uh, gender you are, it doesn't matter your sexual preference, it doesn't matter. You live your life but you should not harm others. So libertarians believe that yes, there should be a government but it is it should be so limited that it will only protect the individual properties and individual rights. That is it. And there will be no collective rights. But liberalism, on the other hand, believes that there are collective rights and those collective rights are also going to be supported by the government through welfare projects. So these are the actual differences between liberalism and libertarianism. So now let's talk about socialism. The political ideology of socialism advocates for greater governmental power in the ownership of property and the means of production rather than the individual freedom. As the core belief of socialism is that the individuals are greedy and self-centered and should not be left alone. So socialism is the idea which is uh, very close to communism idea or the idea of communism or the politics of communism. So socialism is is uh, is told to be a stepping stone towards communism. If a country is a socialist country, it is almost a communist country. It just needs a one-party rule. If that country has one-party rule and certain other factors uh, installed in that government, then it will become a communist country. So socialism and communism are very close to each other. So socialism actually believes that individual persons are not to be trusted with property. So the state should control most of the property, if not all of the property. So in a socialist country, government holds key industries, holds key business points, and government has a lot of power over the people. Socialist pol uh, politics tries to instill cooperation through government oversight. So socialist politics uh, aims to uh, bring about cohesion in the society among among the groups of the people that live in the society or among the classes of people that live in the society. But they do it through government oversight. They do it through rulemaking. They create laws that yes, you should not have uh, any kind of disagreements. So that is the approach socialists take. In a socialist state, the government is the biggest and the most powerful political and economic entity. So in a socialist country, we will see that government is the most powerful entity, whether it's uh, in, the, in, the, in the scientific endeavor or in the business field or in the research or in the agriculture, wherever you go, government has every kind of control and the bigger companies, bigger institutions are controlled by the government. And also the market is controlled by the government. Government actually creates rules, regulations, and also it has the companies that are running in businesses in the market of that country. That is a socialist policy. Socialism promotes controlled economy where the prices of goods are decided by the government and the market is in the hands of the government. So socialism actually controls everything of, uh, of a country and it aims to control the prices of the goods as well. Equality is more important than freedom to a socialist. So socialist principle actually advocates for equality, social equality. There should not be any poor or there should not be a super rich. There should be just general people or middle income people. Socialists believe that in order to achieve absolute equality, a government must enforce every and all measures of uh, all measures to restrict the people in front and uplift the people in the back of the social ladder. So if we see the society as a ladder, there will be people who are at the bottom and there will be people who are at the top. So socialist principle actually aims to bring the people in the middle. They don't want very successful people and they don't, don't want any uh, absolutely less successful people. They want to uh, take the money from the successful people and give the money to the less successful people in order for the less successful people to go up the social ladder but many times it has tried but it does not necessarily work in socialist countries 
Socialism in one uh, is one of the four fundamental principles of state policy in the constitution of Bangladesh. So if you look at Bangladesh and the constitution of Bangladesh, it is enshrined as one of the four fundamental principles of state policies. So Bangladesh can be said to be a socialist country. From the birth of the modern Bangladesh in 1971, its governments have continuously implemented socialist policies in the country. So the government, how it works, how it implements its policies, the rules, laws, regulations, everything has socialism attached to it. We may not understand it, but socialism is the driving force of the politics in Bangladesh. Many of the political parties in Bangladesh actually follow socialism. So it is up to us to uh, actually judge what kind of political system we want to implement in our country. So I hope you have understood the lecture content today. So we have talked about a very interesting three political principles, liberalism, libertarianism and socialism. These are very interesting. These are very good principles and these are uh, actually implemented in many countries all over the world. So I hope uh, you will research on that even more and uh, implement those knowledge in your own political and social life. Thank you all for participating in today's class and I hope to see you all in the next class. Thank you.